All right, y'all, we back. So I was stumbling across YouTube and I came across this article of this uh, couple who they moved to France. After about a year, they were like, ah, we got enough of this. We got to move back to America. They ran into some challenges that were just a little bit too much, a little more than they expected. So the point of this article is just to let you know that uh, the expat life isn't for everybody. There's a lot of challenges that goes into it. And um, if you don't do your research and if you don't plan properly, there can be some heartache. There can be some pain. There can be some financial struggle associated with making a move. So uh, without further ado, y'all, let's hop into this story and uh, talk about their experiences. Peace. All right, y'all, we back. So let's go ahead and get into this article. So I was stumbling on uh, Yahoo and uh, this article popped up. So it was about a, a, a couple who they were staying in France and uh, for whatever reason, they decided that they had enough. They had enough. After about a year, they were ready to move back to America. Um, I say that to say it's just proof positive that relocating isn't for everyone and uh, the life of, of an expat can be complicated it can be hard and there's a lot of challenges sometimes um, alright so let's get into the story alright uh, it looks like it was published on CNN the title is too much grief and no joy this couple plans to return to the U.S. after their dream life in France became a nightmare. Um, okay, so this couple, they moved to France from San Francisco in October 2023. Uh, just after about 12 months, uh, this couple, they're on the brink of returning to the U.S. Now, this is before the election, so I don't know if they were Trump supporters or if they were Kamala supporters. Not exactly sure. They were in San Francisco. Obviously, they must have had a little bit of money. Looks like their ages were 74 and 75 years old, so they're a little bit up there. I'd assume they probably saved a good bit of money. They're, uh, you know, doing okay in life, obviously, to up and move to France, and, and that's what they did, right? So they say... Uh, once they got to France, one of the biggest problems was they, they struggled to make friends. Uh, they became increasingly frustrated with the bureaucracy in France. Um, trust me, y'all. If you move into another country, it's not just France. You'll have these issues anywhere you go. Um, uh, Africa in particular, and Africa is a big continent. I know it's not just a country, but... Um, the, the laws and, and some of the, the hoops and things that you got to jump through. It's not always friendly. It's not always easy. Um, it can be very frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of people, lawyers included, lawyers, government <laughs> representatives and whatnot, who when you come over, they see you as a check and they'll do everything in their power to separate you from your money. So you have to be conscientious of that. You have to pay attention to those traps and uh, you really have to do your due diligence, try to link up with some people, uh, preferably folks who have been there from your country before, who've kind of navigated those waters to show, show you how to navigate as well. Um, so the lady, she goes on to say, we gave it a year here. Too much grief and no joy. There's no fun. We struggle every day. Uh, frustrated and exhausted, right? She says, honestly, I don't think we could have put any more effort to acclimatize to the French way of life. Uh, she described her experience as a nightmare, as a nightmare, y'all, as a nightmare. While we're still working out the final details of the imminent return, uh, this lady says that they're frustrated and exhausted by the life of France and feel ready to give up and leave. Uh, uprooting their lives from the Californian city and moving to France was certainly not a decision taken lightly, they said. Uh, they were married for 20 years, already traveled the world extensively, together and separately beforehand. Uh, this woman, she didn't get married till she was in her 50s. She's from San Francisco when she met her husband. They traveled around. They have no children. 
no siblings, no parents, there's nothing to weigh them down. So, you know, they're free, right? Uh, a life without children and, 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 you know, parents and things of that nature should be a little, a little easier to navigate, a little easier to move around. Uh, travel, flights and things of that nature should be a little bit easier to get. You have a little more freedom and a little more money to, you know, kind of spend on yourself, right? Uh, she explains that they bought and sold three different homes during their first 15 years of marriage, giving us a comfortable amount of cash to afford uh, the option to travel and relocate anywhere in the world. So three or four houses that they're selling in San Francisco, I'd imagine those houses range anywhere from, you know, 300 to 500 to maybe even a million dollars a piece. You know, I'm just assuming, right? Prices of living in California is very high. So again, I'm sure they're doing very, very well in life. So I don't think money was necessarily an issue for them. Uh, let's see, back in 2010, a couple bought a summer home in Northern California, spent eight years or so going back and forth to California, uh, going back and forth to San Francisco. So like, again, these people got money. These people got money. Uh, I think every married couple needs two places to live because you've got to get away from each other. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Uh, maybe so, y'all. I don't know. Uh, I'm not buying a house to get away from my spouse. That's, that's wild. That's wild. Uh, let's say they became increasingly frustrated with the political climate in the U.S. and felt the urge to move somewhere else permanently. Again, like I said, they just had the election. A lot of people are very disappointed that Trump got elected. Uh, a lot of people are very happy he got elected. So it all depends. Like I said, um, the price of living in, in America is through the roof right now. It's ridiculous. You know, insurance prices are not kind to anyone. No, I mean, you got home insurance, car insurance, uh, uh, health insurance. All of those are crazy. Property taxes are stupid high. Uh, groceries are through the roof, uh, you name it, right? Uh, it's just hard. It's hard over here, man. It's hard over here. Um, let's see. She says, I'm a pretty political person, and I feel like the U.S. should be better. Uh, it never gets better. I would agree. I would attest to that. And these are people that got money. So imagine if you don't have money. Imagine if you're struggling. You really hate what's going on in the U.S., uh, let's see. 2021, a couple moved to London, spent much of the time of traveling in different countries. Da 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 da. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, he was a former IT executive, so you know, you know, balling. Big, big daddy Warbucks, right? Big daddy Warbucks. So they hired a relocation specialist, got an apartment, da 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 da. But things weren't straightforward as they envisioned. They said securing a visa proved to be complicated. As the process was uh, for arranging for that cat to fly over would cost them an extra $5,000. Look, y'all, I don't care nothing about pets. Um, you know, I know some people love their pets like they love their kids. That's never been my thing. That cat would still be in the States, and that would be what it is. You can get cats. You can get dogs anywhere you go. Um, bring the pet over. That's foolishness to me. Yeah, that's foolishness to me. Um, I tell you what, though. They're right about the visa process. It can be, uh, depending on where you're going, it can be uh, very, very, very tedious, meticulous, and not user friendly. Um, again, uh, personally, I'm in Africa. <sighs> it all depends on uh, what country in Africa you're trying to move to. Some make it a lot easier than others. Uh, nowadays, there's some places that are doing things for expats who can work remotely online. Uh, Time of visas should be an easier way to get visas depending on where you're at. And, uh, you know, obviously you can set up business visas as well. Um, however, some of these visas do require, like a business visa in particular, you got a bunch of different, you know, loopholes you got to jump through. And sometimes it's going to be a costly process in order to get there. Um, specifically in Tanzania, they just kind of came about with a new investment visa. Basically, if you buy, uh, you know, some investment real estate property, and you spend over a hundred thousand dollars, you can you can get your uh, investor uh, investment type of visa. But again, that's if you got a hundred thousand dollars available to you to buy property. You know, not everybody has that money saved up, so um, that can be that can be something that 
isn't the easiest way of doing things. Um, so yeah, back to the story, back to the story. Okay, so it says, uh, before leaving the U.S., the couple made a decision to hold on to their rental uh, rent control apartment. Uh, she had lived in that place for 40 years and then go as planned. Uh, she says we could never afford to buy back into California because it's really expensive. Uh, to 2023, they set about building new lives for themselves in a French city, which has a population of 137,000. Never anticipated that this wouldn't work out. We thought, well, We'll die here. We're done. I know uh, a lot of people in Tanzania have come over here. Uh, they thought this was going to be home. They thought it was going to be home over there. And then after a year or two, they realized that, you know, uh, immigration issues were just not working out the way they, they wanted it to work out. Uh, maybe they felt like they're being taken advantage of by locals or, you know, just jumping too many hoops or uh, spending too much money, you know, so it can be a money trap. It can be a money drain. And some people were running into issues and, you know, going back home, going back home. I know, I know a couple of different people who, uh, got fed up with the way things are going and they just, they, they packed up, they packed up, they sold what they could sell. They're back in the States and they're trying to find another way. Not saying that they gave up. They might move to South Africa this time around or try some other, uh, country in Africa, but, you know, a lot of people are, are, are getting frustrated. Um, all right, so back to the story. Uh, the fact that she struggled to pick up the new language gave them some some issues and some difficulties. Now, personally, uh, I feel like it's worth it to get a teacher. Uh, there are many sites where you can try to get uh, teachers to help you pick up a language. Um, du Duolingo. I think is a phenomenal tool to try to assist you at least with vocabulary building. It might not help you with all the conversation building, but in order to start conversations and have conversations, you need vocabulary. So I feel like it's just, it's important to use that tool. Uh, talk to locals as much as you can. Study the books as much as you can. You have to you have to try to integrate yourself into whatever country you move into. I know some people say, oh, you know, I'm not going to learn. I'm going to be me. And that's just how it's going to be. That's cool. Uh, for personal experience, I find that the more you try to speak the common language, the easier your transition is going to be. People are not going to take advantage of you as much, you know, when you know, negotiating prices on a day to day basis. Um, it's easier to make friends if you can have a little conversation with them. Sometimes you, you know, if you can't understand each other, you just say, okay, whatever. And sometimes you see people and you smile and you wave and you might say the basics of an introduction. But if you can't go any further than that, you never really make it past that surface level. So again, um, taking that time to, to learn the language is important in my opinion, in my opinion. Uh, you know, she says, uh, people go, oh, my God, the food, the French food is so fabulous. She says, if you want to eat brie, pate, pastries, and French bread all day long. Yeah, sure. But who eats like that? Hey, you got to know what it's like where you're going, man. You got to know what it's like, how people eat. You know, um, I love rice, right? I love rice. So um, I find like uh, African countries, Nigeria, Ghana, you know, uh, different places in Tanzania and whatnot. A lot of the dishes are like jollof based and, and, and wali based, which is rice, you know, rice based dishes. Look, I'm from New Orleans. We eat rice with everything. Jambalaya, red beans and rice, gumbo, etouffee, whatever, whatever, whatever. We doing it with rice, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta know where you're going and kind of see how that's gonna work. Cause if you don't like the food, that's, that's, that's part of the battle right there. Now, if you think the food is busting, hey, you know, you eat your food, man. That make you happy. So, uh, yeah, that's important. That's important. That's important. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So they tried to transport a car over. 
I done, I sold all my stuff. That wasn't even something that you try to do, man. Trying to trying to get your car overseas is a nightmare. It can be a nightmare. It probably will be a nightmare. Um, just avoid that. Don't even think about that. Sell it, sell it, and start over. You might not get the same level of car that you once had in the states, but hey, you know you're leaving, right? You're leaving with the thought of sacrificing. So, you know, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um. I'm looking over this, you know, they're saying that, you know, you can do it. It's not a problem. Well, it wouldn't be a problem if the systems were consistent and made sense, but they just don't. You can get five different answers to one simple question. I would agree. I would agree. I would agree, especially if you're in African countries. It, it can feel like it can feel like that. You know, I say here where I'm located, the rules on a book, the actual rules of law and what you're told as far as what the rules are, uh, uh, word of mouth. They vary, you know, it's the application of the law versus the letter of the law. Um, it's not always the same. So um, systems, Internet systems, um, things of that nature are not always up to speed. Um, if you're looking up information online, that information isn't always consistent with the information that you're being told by the quote unquote lawyers or, you know, uh, things of that nature. So um, it can be frustrating. It can be difficult. So I'll just say that again, you have to try to meet up with other people who have been there before you kind of learn from their experiences and whatnot, and just know to dig your heels in because it's going to be, it's going to be full of, um, it's going to be full of uh, obstacles. It is. I don't know of anybody who just had a totally uh, smooth transition, at least coming to African countries uh, that I know of. Maybe some have. I don't know if you have. If this is you, you know, put the country that you moved to and, and, and tell people the way, the ways, the ways. Help it, help it easier. Help it be easier for the next person. Help it be easier for the next person. But, um, you know, again, they go on to talk about the social struggles, you know, how it's hard for them to make friends. Uh, the bureaucracy, uh, you know, looking at this, they're talking about how the bureaucracy exists. And when you complain to the locals um, or when you complain to others around, they'll say, well, you know, they just shrug the shoulders and say, that's it. That's just how it is. Get used to it. Um, I've seen people complain about different areas uh, where the taxes might be high or they're asking you to pay for, you know, insurance that seems like a tourist trap or seems like a money grab and, and people say well that's the rules y'all got y'all rules and it's so hard for us to you know integrate into your country so you know deal with it the law is the law and y'all should stop complaining again sometimes people don't they don't they don't have sympathy towards your plight they don't see it like you see it they just see you as the rich american coming over here trying to take advantage of the system and come to their country so you have to be cognizant of that Sometimes you just have to see where other people are coming from and, and, and not take everything personally. Um, and just keep your head down. Keep your head down and find like-minded people like you who can, you know, support you in what you're going through. Um, <laughs> this woman said at one time she talked to her husband and said, I haven't talked to one person here in three months. I just miss interacting. She said, adding that someone doesn't necessarily want to hang around with expats. And that's not exactly why we came out on this adventure. Locals have been friendly and welcoming, but Johanna hasn't managed to strike up friendships the way she would have hoped to, conceding that the language and cultural barriers have made things more tricky. It is hard. It's a hard shell to break, she says. They're very private people, but they're also principled and moral. They're nice people. There's nothing that kind about them. They're just not so, uh, extremely social. Uh, again, y'all, sometimes you got to figure out where they're going to be at. You want to make friends. You need to get in groups. You need to go to the gym. You need to go to, you know, hop in different clubs. You need to find ways to be social. You know, sometimes making friends is not about a people group. It's about the activities that you're doing. It's hard for all people to make friends and it's hard for no people to make friends. You just have to do things on a constant basis. You know, visit the same, the same locals and, and the same patrons and patronize different people and whatnot. And that's how you make friends over time. You develop relationships. You know, you develop relationships. Um, 
All right, long story short, they love friends, yada, 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 they're making a tough decision to move back home. I'll post the article so you can read the rest of it, but at the end of the day, basically, after about a, a year here in France, the couple was trying to ship their, their possessions back to San Francisco. Uh, and trying to, well, they were thinking that they were going to move back based on their decision, uh, based on the results of the U.S. election. I don't know. I wish them the best. I hope they can figure it out for themselves. Again, like I said, it seems like they have money. At the end of the day, they say they have a flight going back to San Francisco. Uh, they didn't think they were coming back. They didn't want to say they failed, but it just didn't work out. Uh, they don't miss the politics in the, in the States, but they know how to live in the States. Even though bankruptcy for people due to health care costs can be a problem. Children living in hunger can be a problem. Uh, the cost of, you know, medical insurance can be a problem. The cost of living in the States can be a problem. They know how to live in the United States. And I think a lot of us, that's what we deal with and that's how it is. You don't like it here. You struggle here. But this is what you were born into. You know how it works. The laws are more cut and dry so to speak at least you know how to navigate the processes and whatnot um you know if you pay for a service what to expect as far as getting that service you you, you don't you know expect to have to pay facilitation fees to you know pay somebody to do things that they're supposed to already do uh you kind of have an expectation of the time frame that it'll take for things to get done so we're just used to being in Babylon. We're used to being in the system of America and how America operates and, you know, all of that good stuff. So, again, I thought this was an interesting article, again, uh, especially on the heels of the election. Uh, many people talking about, man, if Trump is elected again, I'm leaving the United States. All right, cool. I just know what to expect. Not everywhere is going to be um, a, a, a cup of tea, so to speak. You know, you're still going to have obstacles. Other places have their own political insurrections and, and upheavals and, and, and things of that nature that can be problematic. You know, you go to a country as a tourist and the life as a tourist is different than the life as a as a as a resident. So uh, take that take that into consideration. Also, a lot of times we visit places and all we do is stay in the resorts. <laughs> You know, we're on the five star resorts, we're on the four star resorts, and all you see is, you know, oh, uh, the beach, the paradise, the beauty of that that country. But you haven't gotten out into the villages, you haven't interacted with the people, you haven't seen the struggles, you haven't, you know, lived with the folks and listened to the complaints. So, um, you know, just take all that in, into consideration, y'all. Uh, thanks for watching. If you got questions, um uh, hit me up um again i'm in east africa i'm starting to venture out into different countries and different other states uh, or whatever you want to call it uh cities uh locations within these different countries and whatnot starting to open my eyes and see and experience life on the motherland so if i can help you with your transitions or your journeys feel free to let me know also feel free to check out my videos that i have posted on my youtube page um this is your brother mark we moving back.com y'all be good